and welcome to another amazing session of Beer Talk. My name is Alaji, and today we have a very special guest in the building. <laughs> uh, this lady is a vlogger, a philanthropist, an activist. She manages an Afro-mending artist duo. Our guest today is no other person but the queen herself. Siboya! <laughs> Sibona Jala! <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Sibona <laughs> Jala! <laughs> thank you! <laughs> thank you for having Welcome me. Welcome to Peer Talk, Thank Sibon. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for coming through, yes. man. We really, really appreciate this, you know. Um, we were so excited about this. You know, when we um, um, scheduled you, everybody was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were so happy to have you on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Most you considered. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so let's get into it, you know, Sibo. So tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Okay, so um, I'm Mariamo. Mm. Mariamo Conte. Um, I was born and raised in New York. Um, Big city. Yeah. So I, <laughs> um, obviously, as you mentioned, I'm the content creator for Siboya. So I manage a Facebook page, YouTube channel, Instagram, and a WhatsApp group. Uh, for Siboya, um, you know, I, I also have my own charity called Sibola de Maro that I'm sure we'll talk about further. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, mm -hmm. I work in healthcare management as well in Seattle. So um, I've been in Seattle for about two and a half years now, didn't mm -hmm. live here very long, but yeah, that's like. Wow. The gist of who I am, I guess. I'm not very good at talking about myself. And that's crazy though. From New York, you know, yeah. you all know how New York is moving down to a company out of upstate. Mm -hmm. So how is that like? It's a it's definitely a culture shock for several reasons. Cause, um, I was in the Bronx where I was born. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the neighborhood is rough, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've we've seen some things growing up but then also even apart from that my community was very cultured so i grew up around a lot of Gambians. Okay. um the the building that i even lived in before moving here was like 80 percent sarokule forget that oh, just sarokule so dama <laughs> they filled the building and then of the course, course, I'm it. Ah, I'm looking to mama, my mama my mama <laughs> 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 you know, you guys don't respect me Alphas, that's the problem. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I grew up around a lot of Gambians generally. So mm -hmm. coming here, yeah, there's a lot of Gambians here, but not in a congested yeah. situation like us, mm -hmm. where we are literally on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different um, with regards to that. But um, ultimately, we chose, like my family, we chose to move here because I already have family. I have a lot of family. My brother lived here. For 10 years before I moved here I have cousins here so it was a good like decision to move here based off first having a better quality of life for our family and then mm -hmm. also having the family yeah. support if we need them and thank God my mom is here so she helps yeah. too so yeah it's good. Cool. yeah it works out that's what's up man yeah. so okay we say all, all this you know um what did um growing up in America you know as a daughter of an immigrant Immigrant parents, you know, we all know how that is. Sometimes, you know, that's that could be crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, especially back in the day, now things are happening. But the way people used to perceive Africa, mm -hmm. so how was that like? You know, from friends, and then another thing is like you were raised by two entities: the I mean, the street or the school, yeah, and back home African household. How is that like for you growing up? So. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm not as outspoken as a lot of people think I am. Like, mm -hmm. no, let me backtrack. I'm very outspoken, <laughs> but yeah. but I'm, I'm outspoken. Shy. Like I speak, I say what when it comes to the truth, I say what I have to say. But I'm mm -hmm. generally a shy person. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't someone who was in the street with my friends a lot. I really was brought up in my house, mm -hmm. so I was always under my mom and my dad all the time usually I went to school and went home for the most part as a child and um, when I was in school 
it's like you would think that when you raise around white people, that's where you face racism. But sometimes, with, with unfortunately, with African Americans, mm-hmm. you, you have those experiences. Because I've been yeah. told, I'm, I'm sure the first time I was told to go back to where I came from, it actually was from an African American rather yeah. than a white person. Mm-hmm. Is it from here? Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, and a lot of that comes from how Africa was portrayed. So, mm-hmm. like you know, Africa is not portrayed as somewhere favorable. You don't want to be connected to Africa because mm-hmm. everything with Africa is poverty. Everything with Africa is struggle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, so a lot of that time, so like in the 80s before I was born, that's when there was a lot of conscious like, oh, we're from Africa. But then I, I think, in my opinion, media paid, played a role mm-hmm. in like yeah. looking down on Africa. Like mm-hmm. I grew up, I, I'm, I, I'm like beyond my years in a sense that I used to enjoy watching sitcoms like Martin and those kind of shows. Oh, so and like Steve Harvey, I like those kind of shows mm-hmm. when I was young. So those shows which have episodes of them making fun of African people, saying like. Like it was, it's abnormal to eat goat and sweet mm-hmm. stuff, or like, oh, they talk like, mm-hmm. you know, these <laughs> kinds of things. Yeah. So it's like, you have those circumstances where they look down on me because my features are more African than them. So I'm automatically associated with African people. Mm-hmm. But then we also have, um, you know, the. It's kind of hard when you have parents who don't understand the system that much. Right. They're not they don't speak English Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's like a lot of the things I had to kind of pave the way on my own Mm -hmm. you know with regards to just understanding certain things (laughs) so it was like but at the same time too I'm very New York (laughs) <laughs> very New York so I don't let nobody cross me because <laughs> it's like New York teaches you to be tough mm-hmm. in a sense especially when you are female because you can honestly get attacked in the street mm-hmm. like verbally physically you can get attacked in the street so I had to also try to be tough and then when you have like parents who especially my mom she's very like you know my mom is very <laughs> yeah. to God mm-hmm. let's pray all night everything's gonna be okay and I always want to defend myself too so mm-hmm. it, 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 it put a lot of different parts to my personality together mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I think I think I was able to be blessed to take the good things mm-hmm. in That's a good. sense yeah okay you want me to come in? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. yeah so mm-hmm. still talking about your child uh because another post they did on Facebook, you, know, you guys sometimes like you African American, Africans who are born in America. Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself in a dilemma where you don't fit in that much in America. Oh yeah. You, when you go to Gambia today, like oh America didn't want. <laughs> so how do you guys? How can we navigate that? Well, it's forget even when you go to Gambia when you here. <laughs> even here. Yeah. Because I I feel like. Um, all right, somebody like me, as mentioned, I was always around my parents. Mm-hmm. So usually every time my mom is somewhere, you will see me with her. And mm-hmm. usually when my dad too is somewhere, you will see me with him. And then I actually enjoy conversations that they have. Mm-hmm. But when I ask questions, they will sometimes be like, you, don't understand. you know, especially these American, American kids, people. you know what I mean? Or I get judged, I got judged quickly, mm-hmm. for instance, if they say, Kari Dino, me, mm-hmm. men but the men jump. They already assume that oh, I don't yeah, care yeah. about my yeah. culture. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to speak Assessment. my language. Yeah. I don't. They already assume that, and then when I speak, my nigga, they get confused. Mm-hmm. So don't you think, fam, we um, girl quote are kind of like a pride, but it do American what it is. Kafuko, American didn't. They 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 saying it. Even though you might see it as something negative, but it yeah, I mean it in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Well, so which mm-hmm. I think also um, is a form of stereotype. Mm-hmm. You may not understand what, you, what you're what what you doing, but mm-hmm. how people are perceiving or the individual is perceiving yeah. what you are telling them yeah. com- can be completely different. Indeed. Yeah. I, I think it depends on the circumstances. Yeah. Because in certain circumstances, mm-hmm. I can see them praising me in a sense right. but then in certain circumstances when I'm saying like X, Y, and Z is wrong they'd be right. like you know these American kids in Mount Kulo. it's yeah. those kinds of things yeah. that they would yeah. say yeah. you know when yeah. ultimately I do understand your perception your mm-hmm. perception is just a little bit skewed <laughs> and you know and mm-hmm. you, we all know that there's certain things in our culture yeah. like I, I love my culture yeah. I don't ever yeah. put down my culture but there's certain mm-hmm. things that we know mm-hmm. come on you know so it's like if I if I ever challenge I don't look at it as challenging but they always felt maybe right. feel like I was challenging mm-hmm. so if I do challenge something they would say like you know and it's yeah. like okay yeah. so it depends yeah, sometimes it depends. I, I get like 
I'm privileged actually. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's the example with Gambia. If I go to Gambia, I have mm-hmm. a sense of a privilege yeah. because they look at me as like, oh my god. You know, when I'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking at them too like I kind of envy them a little bit too because mm-hmm. they have more of the culture okay. that I wish I had mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. they have I actually envy children raising like people who are raising Gambia mm-hmm. when I sit and listen to stories mm-hmm. like even if my husband says oh I remember when he was a kid and we used to oh, no, like, envy him. Uh, yeah. like I envy those things, especially because like just to tap into this of my childhood a lot I was someone that I kind of grew up quickly Quicker, yeah. so I didn't do a lot of the things that my peers did because right. I was always with my parents I always worried about my parents I was worried about disappointing them mm-hmm. so there's certain things I didn't do even as a child in America mm-hmm. so then when I listen to people like oh, I remember when me and my parents were here and I'm like no I didn't do that with yeah. them. you know so yeah I can I can chime into that also. Mm-hmm. Like I think my question would be, you know, for example, if you if you mingle with a lot of gaming, say for example, we have a naming ceremony, we mm-hmm. have you know any kind of uh, gaming gathering, mm-hmm. you know, we can see that there is a gap between mm-hmm. people who are born here mm-hmm. and you know some of us who immigrate from Gambia mm-hmm. and then live here. Mm-hmm. There's a communication gap. Yeah. You know, from your experience, do you think it's a communication or is it is it a culture that is rooted in our gaming? You know, immigrant community that you know we can help people who are born here. Mm-hmm. So we, we bridge a gap, you know, mm-hmm. educate them about the Gambia, yeah. and then pick the good side of both cultures so they could be better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's dependent on how old you were when you have this experience. So for mm-hmm. and then where you were, because if mm-hmm. you if you remember, I said New York was very cultured. Mm-hmm. So Nte Delta, honestly, Nte Delta men is named Kulio Binasi, Nte Nimbangata Kulita Bidula. I'm used to that. Oh wow! I used okay. to go and I used to help cook and they used to kick me out of the kitchen mm. but I used to help there that's mm. what I'm used to because that's how New York is okay, New that, York that is, is like, really unique Gambia is I like Gambia honestly I mean New York is honestly like mm. people can say Jammu Gambia let's say, yeah. because we do th- I'm telling you you can walk on the street and the Sarakules are screaming yeah. at each other across the street I'm not talking like that's how it is in New York you know mm-hmm. so like I'm used to that but mm. then coming here mm. I think it could tap into what you're talking about because mm-hmm. like um, I remember like my first like naming ceremony. I was like, okay, where's the cooking? And they was like, Seattle? yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh no, we don't do that. You mm-hmm. just bring what you can. Yeah, yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's different. So mm-hmm. I think it is a communication thing, but it's also an expectation. Like, what do we expect from each other? That probably has to be clearly communicated. Mm-hmm. And then we put our culture in our events too. Like, let's try, like, let's try our best to really show the culture yeah, and bring absolutely. your children. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. I used to go to every single name concerned with my mom and my dad mm-hmm. so in the morning I used to be with my dad yeah. and then I used to be with my mom so I used to see it and then even now I remember like when I first came and I would bring my daughter to events and they'd be like why didn't you leave her with somebody and that's not normal for me mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah. I used to go with my mom so I want my daughter to be with me as young as she is but I would want her to be around it too right. so I think it's the, expo- the exposure and then being willing to explain and also being willing to stick to our culture too because mm. we try to innovate and change things a lot in our culture yeah, um, our yeah. culture our events have become yeah. more material than more about the culture the culture yeah. and the you know like the reason for it and yeah. you know like Mayo Bito now people Based. who like express Mayo Bito for a big wedding mm-hmm. but yeah. the purpose of an actual Mayo Bito like I remember my cultural wedding like the final thing I laid on the floor mm-hmm. you know but like it was very like broken down mm-hmm. I haven't been to one here so I don't know how to go and, and I, I can follow up on that or I can pitch in on that if you look at the Gambian weddings here in America mm-hmm. we compare that to Nigerian weddings in America yeah. look at those people mm-hmm. they're promoting their culture yes. everything is culture yeah. mm-hmm. if, you, if you respect your culture when people come to you they respect you and it's, 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 yeah. it's basic no that's the case you know, so I think I, I 100% agree so with that we, we tend to sit pretty in, quickly okay. um, I want to come in this is something I'm very 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 big on uh-huh. they're talking about culture culture New York I like you know from I love it yeah but when you come down the basic 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 what I'm going to come mm-hmm. indeed yeah Local region, five, ten, <laughs> Seattle. My New York, but I never stayed there. Right. But maybe you know, judging from you, you don't come and come for now. Yeah. You're born here, you're like a metal man here. Yeah. And maybe in your like, culture, of course. But in Seattle, no mm-hmm. proud could do not come and come for now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fly come for now. Well, they can't even fly come for now. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Don't, don't have to admit that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the worst thing, mm-hmm. the Catanilla of Africa is 
yeah the importance of teaching your kids mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the importance of telling them where they're from the identity yeah. 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 no matter where they, they can never escape from them. yeah mm-hmm. love to hear for and then if I can move for like um, I will broad a little bit I think confusion can start from now whole concept about being or uh, migrating to America you know or building a family in America confusion will start out mm-hmm. because when to do it typically most of us we are going for it can we broken down and go for okay we are going out but we will come back home Mm-hmm. Right. Not, the majority of us, that's never our intention. Yeah. So <laughs> Africa, Af- yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? Africa become a second home. Yeah. So what end up happening, we not in Nigeria, we prefer abandoning our culture totally. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. Nigerian culture starts to assimilate into it. Mm-hmm. So what confusion can start with? Because the new sign, it becomes a new tool. So yeah, mm-hmm. from the uh, African culture to the African culture to the from the brain level down. Yeah. What confusion can I do? And my point is again, I'm big on first to go back home. Now I'm in Jang Jang Bangkok in Yorenyame. You understand? I would have more cool like them. Until the far back or not. So there is no way. The moment they come to a point, they love money at the same table. I don't know about you can. I can laugh on repeat all the time. Mm-hmm. And what has been happening? They've been buffering us for so long. Mm-hmm. You understand? Know, even in Gambia, the educational system which we have in Adil, they don't talk about the commercial trade in Yemen. No. What are we here? Mango Papa and what's the famous explorer? You <laughs> <laughs> understand? Those, those are yeah. bullshit. Yeah. These are things that are not giving us any education. Mm-hmm. If anything, they're just buffering us. We don't know anything. Now, if I can disconnect with nothing, if, again, they play the same game with African Americans here. You don't know nothing about us in Africa. And they don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. You understand? So, Club Bindala, I'm not born in our friend, I'm not born in our friend, I'm not born in our friend. I'm not born in our friend, I'm not born in our friend. <laughs> yeah, understand. So, in the record the conversation, so in that way, embassies are there. For example, in Nigeria, for example, say Ekira. So, just just to trigger some some sense in her. Yeah. Yeah, understand. So, I think Kobe Nyamin, we have to be proud of where we came from. Although one of one time we have our own kingdoms and everything, and Kobe Nyamin work on it. So, let's try them to get a better life. But money is not enough for us. Because Jerome Moliat. Yeah. Let's try. If anything, let's try to develop that place. Because Jay, neither of them you feel really at home when you be there. No matter. How long you stay here, whether you're born here or not. Mm-hmm. And that's what I wanted to add. Yeah, yeah. I, you both touched on something mm-hmm. pretty good. So I think when it comes to. I did a video actually on my channel about yeah. this. Like, how. Because everybody confused. What? Right? So I'm like, all right, I'm tired of explaining to people, like 20 people, let me put it in one video, yeah. right? So this is what I think it is. First and foremost, I wasn't always like this. My mom used to speak to. They used to laugh at me and my mom because my mom used to speak to me and Mandinka. I would answer her in English, and I did that for a lot of my life. Now, for me, it was it was actually like um, emba- I was embarrassed. Like I didn't want, and not embarrassed to speak it. I didn't want to say things wrong. To be very honest with you, I just didn't want to say because I remember those times that I did say something, and then they would make fun of me. And like I said, I was very shy, so I ran away from those kinds of criticism. So eventually, I became. Well, I, I became comfortable enough mm-hmm. to um, to just say it, mess it up, people correct me, right. and then you know you go from there. Mm-hmm. But I, the missing component sometimes is not just to speak the language. Mm-hmm. You have to show mm-hmm. that you love your culture, right? right? So one thing I explained in my video is okay. My parents spoke Mandinka not because they wanted to, because they didn't speak any other language. Mm-hmm. They speak Mandinka, yeah. period. Yeah. So that's one side. Then on the other side, in my home, my media, yeah. in my house, yeah. was always Mandinka. Oh, I can say Gan- yeah. African, 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 African form. Yeah. Okay. African form, because yeah. I used to listen to. Um, we used to watch Mandinka theater, yeah. right? Okay. Like those Bolandala 
people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that all that. We used to watch that in my house. I grew up watching that right now. Right? Is this? Yeah, and I'm the kind of person that I actually um like we come make a phone. We just see YouTube now search phone. Gonna be a theater on. Yeah, make a theater on, and I would like to sit and watch the ones I used to watch. Right, right. So there was the 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 uh, you know the films, the music. Even to the point, Kawando, my parents used right. to listen to, you know, Omar Bunjang and stuff. So mm -hmm. I heard Madlinka a lot. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, you know, in most houses today, people are watching, like, HGTV, they're watching mm -hmm. VH1, they're yeah. watching those that's, things. That's Not to good. say don't watch it, but they can, because my dad watched BBC and CNN too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's also, like, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a fine line right. with the mm -hmm. balance that you have. Mm -hmm. So those are things that showed me that there's something to admire. Right. Because yeah. if my parents are willing to have this play in my house mm -hmm. all day, to this day I actually listen to Gambian music before, and I don't even know what what hip hop music is popular today. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I'd be hearing some wow. yeah. little yeah. Yeah. or something like stuff. that, mm -hmm. and I don't even know the songs today. Yeah. All I listen to, I swear to all I listen to is Gambian music. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, it's, it's a so, problem. I, I think problem when in doubt is, is really huge. Mm -hmm. And really, that I think, yeah, anyway, this is about calling. Yeah, they play with our culture to a point. Mm -hmm. We become shame of our own culture. That's the mm -hmm. case. Let's say, for example, we think about culture, we think that. We do that. And this is so our culture. Yeah. That's a fact, yeah. too. Yeah. So, so, you know, we're not culture. Not culture, right? Not culture. Yeah, you see, you know, 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 this local phone call, you know, 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 you don't allow him to force you to get sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I like what you said, yeah. but I wanted to touch on what you mentioned about um, Africa being a punishment. Exactly. I mentioned that in my video too. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I had to look at myself too because I, yeah. I actually speak both languages to right. my daughter too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to speak more Maninka for you. I think it's okay. But no, what speak, happens yeah. though, mm -hmm. if you don't have a family, Take it, take it, take it, come, right? Yeah. You say move, they don't, they don't listen. You say move, they don't yeah. listen. They say, hey, bo you already associated Maninka come with aggression. Right. So you right. want to be careful exactly. when you want to yeah. associate Gambia with punishment. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's why I'm glad that you That's said that. True. Because yeah. I, I, I learned this in a psychology class too. Mm -hmm. Like even when you tell kids don't do something, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to say like, um, stop this. Mm -hmm. Because you're just mentioning yes. the action. Yes. Instead yes. of saying like stop touching that, you should say put that down and go this way. Mm -hmm. So there's always a, a way that you communicate with mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And if you like I said in my home is embraced. And then being from New York is different because my mom go out with Copilator to go to the store in New York. Mm -hmm. So then for me too when I was going to throw out my garbage in New York yeah. when I first gave birth to my daughter, I'm gonna think of to, to, yeah, to yeah, throw out yeah, the garbage. Yeah. Then the first time I did that here, oh Everybody looked at oh, me yeah. like, what is that? Is yeah. the baby going to fall? Exactly. You know? yeah. So I'm like, okay, this place is not as cultured as New York yeah. is, but the benefit of being in New York and yeah. being around the culture helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to always associate your culture with something positive, not yeah. always as a punishment yeah. or exactly. aggression or yeah. negativity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, show show your children like the nice house that you built in Gambia or like, you know, show them the beaches in Gambia. Yeah. You know, it doesn't even so have to be material. That, as soon as you do that, they want to go down. Exactly. Down. Just yeah. show them the beach. Forget even Bunjong or all that. Yeah. Show them just how beautiful the land is. Because you don't move from. Yeah. These are beautiful stuff. Yeah. 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 I understand. We have to be proud of them. Like I said, Mula culture, although we, Mula culture, you know, mm -hmm. I always like to question things, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'll even say who came up with my last name. Yeah. If somebody can, like if somebody can come with my last name, yeah. I can also come with my own name yeah. that my generation can follow through, right? Yeah. So this is this is this is how I think sometimes about things. Yeah. I know it's crazy now. Yeah, that's that's very that's very important. You said that. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of a lot of kids, man, they don't they don't want to um, claim they're African. Yeah. 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 Before we move on mm -hmm. away from this topic, yeah, there's one important point you made that almost clicked to me. Mm. I see almost 60% of gaming kids that I know here, yeah, 
when I'm born here, the parents were speaking to me in Mandinka mm-hmm. or Wolof, mm-hmm. and they respond back in Back, yeah. And I tell yeah. the parents, don't, don't lose hope. Yeah, don't they will lose. speak it one yeah. day. But what you told me is yeah. not that they they don't want to speak it, but yeah. because we ridicule them, that's huge. Yeah. We don't want to yeah. do yeah. that. We laugh at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when yeah. kids... Say, like, before they say, I don't want to come into full of... Oh, yeah, I don't want to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an important point. Don't yeah. criticize. You know, I think um, and you, you need to encourage. And American children are more sensitive. We are right. more sensitive. Oh, yeah. Things that you can ridicule a Gambian-born child oh, for, yeah. for us, it touches us a little bit more. Oh, for yeah. instance, if... Um, mm-hmm. If I could use like the example of maybe being dark skin or maybe being right. he- more heavy set, mm-hmm. like for American kids, if you it critic because yeah. Uh, yeah, if you criticize me for being dark skin, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna be like, oh man, like yeah. I'm really ugly. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Versus like if it's Gambia, you may feel like if you're Nicole Kembo and everybody right. just nah, can't get that's 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 right. So in American that's kids, you have yeah. to take it easy with us. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the tough love doesn't work on us. It yeah. works mm-hmm. on some of us, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work on all of yeah. them. Yeah. No, I, I so, think yeah, that has to do with your experience too. Yeah. Because Niaji Vejang, how um, especially people of color, mm-hmm. what they have to go through. Mm-hmm. You know, they also tell you, even if you look, uh, look at um, premature, uh, preterm babies. Yeah. You know, it's very common within African American yeah. culture. Yeah. I understand. So we associate to stress, like exactly. you know, being exposed to stress for so long. Yeah. So and the, of the second um, point also. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, for call, like you used to watch Gambian uh, dramas yeah. in theater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's very unique. Yeah. yeah. You know, there is this guy who says, you know, they know they they, they, know they follow their parents exactly. Mm-hmm. If you watch TV every day in your room, mm-hmm. yeah. Guess what? Your kids are gonna hate books. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, but if you if you read like our culture, reading yeah. is not encouraged. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you read a day, all the specific times when my uncle can read, mm-hmm. all the Gambian movie TV or Gambian cultural embrace, we don't even watch the Gambian movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People are watching like the least they can do is Nigerian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the only African yeah. they do. But now it's it's it's, it's completely yeah. opposite. I think I think yeah. no, 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 no. So that's huge. Reading I think I'm okay. I think also you know, Reading that side is very important for my primary read, but I think also what is happening is people are forced right to, to adopt around institutions instead of forcing institutions to adopt around people. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Because no no no, no, no let's say for example in Gambia, I'm talking about it. If I happen to be your president, I'm going to change a lot of crazy. I'll do a lot of crazy things. <laughs> Vote for this guy. Yeah, I because my point is, mm-hmm. why would you force somebody to go and sit in the classroom for six hours or for eight hours? How many kids don't want to go to school? <laughs> it's a question, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So why can't we structure it in a way that there will be an environment that they would love to be in mm-hmm. and learn? Because that's more effective. Yeah. But that's not the case. Yeah. You understand? They're going to institutional law. They didn't know when someone like you buy for Star Caramundo. Why can't it be in Bantabas? That's the Why can't it be just relaxed? Because the most important thing is I'm not knowledge you, sir. You understand? Well, at the end of the day, but we are not doing that because yeah. we instruct the children go, okay, this is how it's going to be. Sometimes I don't want to be in that environment. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's just, that makes sense though. No, I don't want to be in that environment. Yeah. I want to be in a place where I feel like I'm comfortable mm-hmm. to learn. Mm-hmm. And educational, even the normal GBA still, I think the government should play a role in that. No more currently, right? You can't empower in so many ways. So many ways. But about not have to them right? You don't have to necessarily take them to classroom. No, you don't have to take them to classroom. About some of some of some of the health problems that we have, yeah. Like, you say to me, yeah. Right. But that also contributes to my love for culture. Because right. another point that I made in my video mm-hmm. is like, um, how my house in New York, a lot of people remember that, uh, Gambia, the like GM Talea. Mm, they used to yeah. call my house Bunny right. Hamasi. Because okay. everybody would come from Bunny, everybody would come. Yeah. They would come from my house, eh? yeah. So, because of that, there was times when we had four or five guests at a time. Wow. Fresh from Gambia. Yeah. So, two things happen. First of all, if I'm in the house, I come from school early, my mom and dad are at home, I'm in the house with this one lady. Yeah. I need help. I don't speak English. I don't speak my nigga okay. that good. She don't speak English at all. From yeah. her favorite. I know. You know, yeah. I have to force myself. Mm-hmm. But in the opposite, and I used to enjoy them sit around in the living room. Right. 
tell stories Sorry. about school and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So then it gives me just like films. Yeah. It gives me the opportunity to ask questions. Right. Because I was very inquisitive. I'm yeah. very. I always ask too many questions. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it makes me ask questions and it helps me understand the reality of there, mm-hmm. even though I'm not mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So that so, all comes into play of right. like, wow, this is so interesting, and it's what makes me unique. If I go around people who aren't gambling, yeah. mm-hmm. so and that, it, it, that is it a form of education. Yeah. 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 No gambling or they don't like to read. Up on I think typical Africans so don't want to read. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot That's to say fact. about that if you ask me. Yeah, I'm I how I started. <laughs> right. All right. So, all right. So, yeah. This is true. Right. Yeah, no, right. This but, yeah. Yeah. We're always going to talk about uh, a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. A lot so, of things to discuss. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Is, definitely. He's planning to go somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. So, um, Sibo, man, like, this is amazing, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is an amazing conversation, you know. You know, um, but then we, let's, let's move on to your YouTube channel. The Siboya YouTube channel. First, before, before I go to that, Sibo, I know Sibo is Mariama, right? Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, man. Tell me, man. I'll tell you the whole story. So, yeah. <laughs> so it was like, uh, like Christmas Eve. I remember this very clearly. It was Christmas Eve. And like, so first of all, starting a, a blog, I always wanted to, since I was in college, actually, I always wanted to do something like it. But I was, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm very shy. I was always someone to be... I don't know how to talk about myself, obviously, mm-hmm. but in yeah, my community right. in New York, I was a, I was favored. Mm-hmm. A lot of people did like actually they used to shame some of my peers for not being like me, like stuff wow. like that. Mm-hmm. So, but because of that, it comes with a lot of pressure. <laughs> so if you do something, everybody's you know, watching right. you yeah. because yeah. y'all in the communities for them Benyami, you would think Kendo did a mobile thing, but near Pukurongwe killing. More yes, so, yeah. so that's why I was always like afraid to do things. I never even mm-hmm. feel like I maximized to my fullest potential yeah. before Siboya, to be mm-hmm. honest. So, anyways, New Year's Eve, I mean Christmas Eve, and I'm like, I want to do this. And then I told my husband, he was like, Why do you want to do this? So then I explained <laughs> to him what it is, and then I was trying to come up with a name. First and foremost, I knew that the name had to had to be Maninka. Right. Period. Yeah. Mm-hmm period it just had to be my Mm -hmm. so then i was trying to come up with all these funky names but then i realized there's so much i want to do and i'm like I just want to be myself. Where else can I be myself? In my house. So that's why I called it Sibol, yeah. Like Sibol's house. That's Sibol's literally house. where it came yeah. from. Because I just knew there's so many things I want to do under it. So I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> so I actually started it on New Year's Day this year. January okay, sure. is when I launched it. So, so coming to the topics, what, what, what normally inspire the topics? Is it the current, uh, current issues or... How do you um, because you always, you always have very interesting topics that you always discuss. Well, I, my topics are really inspired by some of our societal issues. Mm-hmm. Like, um, we have a lot of issues in our marriages, mm-hmm. with especially with high divorce rates, especially yeah. in Tobago, like America. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my topics come from there. Um, a lot of my topics actually come from people's questions for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like I said, like somebody asked me, like actually several people asked me, like, how is it that you know how to speak my nigga, so I'm like, okay. I gotta put this in one place. So you know things like that. So it, I don't usually do current events because of the fact that I surrounded my, I made my platform to be different from other platforms. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the purpose. Actually, the whole reason why I started my platform, like the basis, is to change a Gambian narrative on social media. Ooh. Social media is too negative, right. and I was too, I was literally sick and tired. Nenduro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kanyo has the Nordoya Karibanta politics. I was yeah. tired of it, yeah. honestly, mm-hmm. because like I end up social distancing myself from <laughs> social media because it's just too much. I know. So I, I wanted to be a, a a place that is positive. Mm-hmm. So that's why one of my first segments was like it's called Spotlight, where every week I used to highlight like a new um, entrepreneur mm-hmm. or community yeah. leader. Like I highlighted, right. you know, Sunrise Ranch, you know, before. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I had. Oh, excuse me, the farm. I don't. I I highlight the people because it's like I'm tired of people posting pictures of somebody. Who, yeah. Excuse me, but they have pictures circulating in the right. social media. This person did this negative. I this know, person is banning. Right. I'm tired. 
I'm so yeah. tired of it. So I was like, let's portray positive people. There's Gambians doing such good things and also to inspire youth because mm-hmm. a lot of youth That's right. think they have to leave Gambia to make it. Make it. So actually, in the beginning, because I didn't know many people, I was using people outside of Gambia, but I was really trying to find entrepreneurs and community leaders in Gambia, in Gambia yeah. to show young people like you do not have to sacrifice yourself on back road. You can make it in Gambia. Right. So basically, like I just try to do anything that portrays positivity, but at the same time portrays the truth. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 no matter who it hurts, okay. you know. No, so I talk about things like bleach, bleaching, skin bleaching. You know, that's a big problem yeah. in, in Africa in general. Yeah. I talked about how rape culture. People don't talk about rape. You get <laughs> abused sexually, and <laughs> it's like, oh, the oh, you know, you know things like that. That's literally what happens, and it happens to Gambian girls in Gambia and outside of Gambia. Yeah. It happens to a lot. So generally, the the thing is, I just created it so that you know. Let's yeah. try to talk about real issues. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing is taboo once on yeah. my platform. Yeah, yeah. And then let's also try to be positive. Mm-hmm. Like, let, let's, let's stop insulting each other for a second. Mm-hmm. And let's just be <laughs> positive. And let's joke a little bit. I'm a little silly, so some people will laugh yeah. and stuff. So, like, let's just relax. Let's mm-hmm. just take a simple yeah, and chill out, you know? Man, yeah. I think that's, that's amazing, you know? Because one thing, uh, one of the things that we do here is to, you know, motivate us back, yeah. Yeah. you know, to make sure mm-hmm. you know, to spread around possibility yeah. and all of that. Mm-hmm. And, man, thank you, man. You, you have a content. Man. I just, I just want to add one thing to what you said. I think, Info was very, very important. Social media shouldn't be a competition. Yeah. Because why can you do nothing? You're getting mm-hmm. and then fighting and then yeah. each other. Mm-hmm. If we can get away from that, mm-hmm. I think our goal should be the Yadda and Now, now I'm not sure when the immigration on the cake on, mm-hmm. especially back to Europe, mm-hmm. most of us stopping right. and believing in ourselves. Yeah. And I'm going to go whereby an intel immigrate enough for the next generation mm-hmm. but make sure we create opportunities for them back home mm-hmm. that they don't have to travel yeah, yeah. I need back at home you have vacation yeah. Yeah. you will be happy to go back home you know, I also think home. that Gambians also have to understand that right. some competition is good yeah. this is what I mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. somebody sent me a message like two months after I started my platform and they yeah. were like see well there's so many people trying to do what you're doing yeah. but just keep going I don't care yeah. I support <laughs> everybody yeah. oh my god I put I posted a video on my Instagram a couple weeks ago saying if you Gambian, if you sell wigs, if you sell bags, if you have a YouTube channel, if you sell anything, I don't care what you sell, Mm -hmm. send me your link and I will post it. And literally, so many people started sending out like they're taking time. I I, I post on my Instagram story every day, several times a day. I can do a video on a topic. And if you do a video on the same exact topic, mm-hmm. I'm sharing your video right. because your mm-hmm. ideas and my ideas are not the same. Exactly. So just because, like, yeah, yeah exactly. maybe there might be other people who want to be, I guess, like Sibuya or something. Yeah. Come on, That's we right. all gotta come in. Exactly, yeah, man. there needs to be more of us. When yeah, just right when Oprah had a talk show, how many other people came out with a talk show? Yeah. A bunch of people came out with a talk show, but you know, it gives variety and yeah. also show, yeah, shows our yeah. talent. Mm-hmm. So I think Gambian sometimes mm-hmm. we we I think the problem is people was so quick to insult mm-hmm. when somebody's either trying to do the same thing the same as you mm-hmm. or you even see you someone as an enemy yeah or, or like enemy. you see someone like oh she just started her channel two days ago and she has 10,000 <laughs> subscribers what am I doing wrong yeah. no it's just let's support each right, other because right, yeah. me I I'm, I have like almost 6,000 subscribers but me if you have five subscribers or if you have 50,000 I'm promoting you yeah. 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 and that's key you know? that's yeah. important because to me you know whatever you create mm-hmm. You know, if if well, uh, not much gonna matter to me. Yeah. So what matters is the impact. Exactly. You know what I mean? When I started the um the audio podcast, mm-hmm. someone called me like, yo, mm-hmm. I was inspired by you. I started mm-hmm. I started mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. podcast. That means that's enough to me. Yeah. 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 I try yeah. to yeah. tell people that yeah. for me mm-hmm. because I have some people message yes, boy, but you can in a subscriber GV. I don't even sometimes I just post yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even check my views. Yeah, I don't think I about it. But what touches my heart more is like when somebody especially <laughs> Oh my god, especially when it's like a young girl. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm emotional, so I've literally yeah. cried yeah. from girls who will be like like see I'm so inspired by yeah. your video. Or I posted a video once uh, something yeah. a marital topic and like this guy messaged me and said like me and my wife was having issues but I took the advice in your video. I swear to that yeah. oh, I was like those are the things yeah. that matter to me most. Yeah, yeah. we don't have much time, man. But spirit, man, we can't let you go without asking this question. You know, see, boy, that day, man, day, man, day, man. Damn, I think that that that's dope, yeah. super dope. Okay, before you go there, so, I got a key. 
because um back to the fact that i'm tired of negativity i'm mm. tired of people complaining <laughs> i my biggest goal with every honestly when i was eight my mm. mom sat me down and had like serious conversation with me about her life things mm-hmm. that she passed through mm-hmm. um not to delve too deep but you know like her mom passed away early she got married early and mm-hmm. things that she's been through and like i i look and then also fast forward into when i was 10 when i did my first visit to gambia and mm-hmm. my eyes open like right. america is nothing like you know what i mean because yeah, this yeah. material that you chase all the time look at these people sitting in the bundle bar just yeah, chilling yeah. they look cool with you know, yeah, they cool. enjoy it you feel me so basically um i already knew that whatever i do in my life i'm taking it to gambia period that's right. it let's start there that's right. so right. then um, we sit and we sit on social media and um, everything happens. Let's say there's one woman who, let's say one health center, women are dying mm-hmm. because they don't have, they lose a lot of blood on the right. every table. Right. We know how common that mm-hmm. is, right? Mm-hmm. And they lose blood. Why? They don't have places to store blood. They don't have blood bags. Mm-hmm. They don't have things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to sit on social media and, and, about, and yeah. blame the, yep. the government, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. I know about 100 people, right? Yeah. Let's say 100 people put $10 together. How yeah. much money is that? Oh, that's a lot of money. Thousand dollars. If I send that to them, how much is that? 50000 yeah. And then yeah. what can you what can you donate to a hospital with that $50,000? How much breast yeah. oil can you buy? Can you yeah. imagine you go to a hospital, they run out breast oil? You understand? Mm-hmm. Or for so th- that's I thought to myself, I said, y'all sitting here complaining. Mm-hmm. When I post a TikTok, six hundred people like my TikTok. What if all six hundred of you gave me one dollar? Mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. help them here. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, I'm not gonna waste no, any time. Mm-hmm. I don't need to wait until I have a certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let's come together as mm-hmm. human beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, period. I think I think so, I think I hundred percent agree with what you say. You know, um, ask not what your government can do for you, but what you can do for your government. government yeah. This is huge, mm-hmm. and this for some reason I cannot understand this. This simple concept mm-hmm. is it's not seen anywhere in social media. Mm-hmm. And this is all these content creators are like people are so negative that mm-hmm. when I go to social media, like you said. I have to say something. I have to step back. Yeah. Sometimes I won't even go there for a month. Yeah. And then I come back. I'm like, okay, this is. a platform, it gets <laughs> difficult because I have periods where I don't want to open Facebook. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. But I have to post this video mm-hmm. that I posted, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know. No, but the mm-hmm. thing that I just want to mm-hmm. add onto that. That is something very key. <coughs> um, what I've been seeing lately on Facebook, well, on, let's say there are many Ghanaians who really need overseas treatment, mm-hmm. right? And this has been. Uh, continuous thing for so long the girlfriend stuff mm-hmm. honestly my my point is we have to be realistic we have to be honest to each other not mm-hmm. enough anyway you understand even a banco do gula and a banco do gula which are handle so how many diamonds in the my uncle every day they need overseas treatment and how much money do we have to raise let's say for example there should be a single dollar content on facebook they are saying about eighteen thousand dollars okay. right eighteen thousand dollars but how many medical equipment is under the hospital a lot that's how right? I look at it. And this is just going to be only one individual without a tiddler. Mm-hmm. And the chances come out of your survival, who knows? Right. right? right. And all, how many other countless Gambians are there who need the same kind of treatment? Mm-hmm. We have to be realistic. I'm not structural so in, structure so in well, place. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. Now, so let me equip. Mm-hmm. Let's have good policies in place. Yeah. Let's have people in those institutions who are ready to work right. and develop our country. Because they tell about no. I'm not going to come out of anything. It's killing our economy. Yeah. Even here for our colleagues from Sudan, individual or yeah. How many people are we spending that money on where we can use those money to develop those institutions? Where about more than a fact? But what then also happens mm-hmm. is before um, we wrap up, I guess, yeah. it's like you mentioned, I went to Kiev. So the reason yeah, why, yeah, yeah, where do you go? because, all right, let's take you back to when the, the trend was command or donate. Yeah. I did not have any money came in. Yeah. Money, money, money came yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know? Birikama mani kute birikama. Do you know how many people went to Birikama to give mano? Yeah. Uh, everybody who donate, they go to Birikama. They go to mm-hmm. Sarakunda. They, they forget about Birikama. us. They, yeah. they forget about Santos. Mm-hmm. They always forget about rural Gambia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, my thing was, um, I have a small team in Gambia. Mm-hmm. The, the COVID cases are rising. Mm-hmm. They don't believe in COVID. I love to babu sasa wote jang. So sifa until tiro la bejento letilo na letilo mankilia. You know sifa, but I'm like, all right. 
Okay, so now is the mass trend. Right. We donated a hundred thousand yeah. masks to Bungie. Yeah. We donated this amount of masks. And, and, and that's not smart. Mm-hmm. Eh? I would tell you it's not well, smart because you know why? Yeah. My whole thing is about sustainability. Yeah. That's what I, I didn't want to compromise my team by having them go on the ferries, too many people. So it was easier access for them to go to Kia. Like you said, it's very the So um apart from that, so obviously we picked the pick the location. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I also tried to do is support Gambian businesses. So our first um, initiative because I only did this is only my second one that we did mm-hmm. so we started in July we did booming health center but we went to pharmacies in Gambia mm-hmm. and bought you know cleaning materials and also medications and things like that versus buying things here and sending Sorry. it there because first of all it's gonna take too long mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm I don't have patience so it's gonna take too long mm-hmm. and then on top of that why not pump it back into Gambia you mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. so the money is collected here or we collected some in Gambia. They collected here, we send it there. They purchase things there. <laughs> so what we did is we hired someone who a, a tailor to mix masks. Not and then um, we bought hand sanitizers. They actually know a doctor in Gambia who makes hand sanitizers. And I was trying to have mm-hmm. him, but I couldn't get him because of time constraints. But mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to working with him. I've worked with him before, but I'm looking forward to that. But that that was my thing. How can we not only help Gambian communities mm-hmm. but help Gambian business? Right. Maybe there's mm-hmm. an entrepreneur like my. Um, real quick, my this month, like, or I could say my this campaign because if it takes more than a month, it takes more than a month. But mm-hmm. it's a um, Quranic school and orphanage mm-hmm. in Farato right. that we want to do. And when I tell, I saw the pictures and I started crying because mm-hmm. the condition that there's 30 orphans there living there and mm-hmm. they're living on deteriorating phone. Some other way, come the water gets in there. So anyway, like in those circumstances, an example would be: Do we know any Gambian entrepreneurs who know how to make beds? Mm-hmm. Do we know Gambians yeah. who sell mattresses? Right. Do we know Gambians who who paint, mm-hmm. who can paint the school for mm-hmm. Those kinds of things. So um, ultimately, that's what we try to do. Right. We 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 give them back because it's not that hard to give back. Mm-hmm. To be honest, we mm-hmm. can yeah, complain yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard. Everybody put twenty dollars together, yeah. and we all be happy. Yeah. But let's help Gambia too. Those those painted or those people who might their businesses might be idling because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Let's support them mm-hmm. and give money to them. So. You know, mm-hmm. I think I think those those are good points. Not I don't know, Monica don't know, but I think I still <laughs> have to say something about that Arabic school stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this is sometimes I think creating those schools is just deliberate. You understand? In people, some yeah, because some people will just go to school create mm-hmm. when actually they don't have the the yeah, funding in place. Yeah, right. They don't have even the idea how they want to build, structure that place yeah. in place, mm-hmm. and then they didn't know what life is. You're wasting their time. Yeah. One, because Arabic, Arabic education for me is like a damn world. Yeah. How many you know, like Arabic school, they can't even fit in the society to have a decent job. Yeah. That's something we but will talk about. That all goes to the individual and their priority, just to wrap yeah. up, of mm-hmm. course, because yeah. um, as a Muslim, mm-hmm. it's not um, about job. Some pe- no, there's people who they just so into their dream that they no, they as long as they got yeah. lunch, mm-hmm. they'll figure out dinner. Yeah. There's some people's like that. Mm-hmm. Then on the opposite and the 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 blessing mm-hmm. of care for an orphan is actually huge mm-hmm. oh, yeah. in Islam. So there's people who mm-hmm. they like the place the place that we mm-hmm. we are you know intend to dema. Yeah. Um, it's a a man Yankuba Dawo. He is a half so he's teaching these children. Right. Mm-hmm. He's getting his blessing from teaching the children he's mm-hmm. getting his blessing from feeding orphans granted mm-hmm. he has to go sell firewood and charcoal to feed them right. but you know and then another thing too is that these people don't ask me for them no, I, um, you know that's yeah. another I, I actually agree with what you're saying yeah. but mm-hmm. what I try to do is I, I try to focus on the people who aren't asking they're not yeah. even yeah. acknowledged yeah. 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 because yeah. nobody in Kian called and said hey we need masks even in the vi- like one of the videos that touched me was when the guy in Kiang was like Alma Almalo mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Alien yes. You know yeah. that that made me feel right. so it's people who they just live in their life every day. My mm-hmm. sister lives around the corner from that place. That's mm-hmm. how I was introduced to that place. So mm-hmm. hopefully we can ch- my my goal is to change their life for right. me. Right. So inshallah. And, and, you know, that's, those but are, I agree with those are very <laughs> yeah. I think those are good. In the yeah. I do that sometimes. Yeah, I it's just good. Yeah. Like I give donations. I don't it's like good. to come out to say yeah, those things. But donate yeah. to Sibola. Yeah. So quick, quickly, yeah, that's what I was yeah, So yeah. if someone wants to donate, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so um, 
for my specific campaigns like I open a GoFundMe link mm -hmm. a GoFundMe campaign mm -hmm. I, for this one I open a Facebook camp, uh, fundraiser as okay. well mm -hmm. I have um, Cash App too, mm -hmm. which is just dollar sign Sibuya, very simple so mm -hmm. if you wanted to donate in Cash App mm -hmm. and PayPal is our email mm -hmm. Sibuya3 at gmail.com so those are the four electronic ways to donate yeah. if it so happens that because there's some people in, in Europe who do like um you know like local transfers local and transfer, stuff yeah. mm -hmm. or let's say like if they send sending fish money to their family mm -hmm. they can add extra and then we have people in Gambia who can collect the money right. there mm -hmm. so I have like those phone numbers too yeah, so yeah those are like five ways mm -hmm. to collect money can you give the phone numbers of the, the collectors in there? no actually you know we're gonna put it in the description yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll put them to you yeah, yeah, yeah. if anybody wanna um you know, down it and mm -hmm. everything. You know, we're gonna put it in the description. Yeah. You know, this is very important. This is uh, mm -hmm. an amazing conversation, man. Um, so thank you so much for coming through. Man. We really appreciate it. And we're gonna do this again. Man. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah, you know, and I'm we're gonna to come back. Yeah, we're gonna have a <laughs> part two of this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, man. Sibo, once again, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for this. And then this is very important, you know, as people, you know, as Gambians, you know. Yeah. Um, we need to give back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you said, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Twenty bucks will mm -hmm. hurt. You know what I mean? So that's like Starbucks for exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think I think it's important. You know, you got, you yeah. have to no, um, don't let me say let me say let me say let me say what I like. Um, I'm big on sustainability and maintenance. Yeah. You understand? I think. Gambia, our Africa has been having so much, you know, donors. People have been doing great things, but just how to sustain that right. is the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, again, even I, I'm in for this um, uh, GoFund thing and all that, but my point is, Daniel Kassini Akili, build a structure that is going to give a fund for you where you yeah. don't have to rely on the same donor. But so the time when you back, maybe yes. you can find another yeah. connection. Yeah, so I, 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 I just, just want to yeah, just thank you. Uh, I know. So yeah, <laughs> just give it thanks to Sibo and all of that. All right, okay, because of the time factor, no, because of the body. Yeah. All right, so, you know, I can say that. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, so this is what it is, man. Let's support each other. Let's support Sibo's channel, too, you know. Mm -hmm. She has a very, very, very good YouTube channel. Yeah, you can make, like, the content is amazing, you know. Yeah, follow Facebook, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, yeah. all that. Cause yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody, man, we need, you know, Sibo. Yeah. Thank you.